start? Okay, I'm really happy to, to introduce our next speaker, Andrea. Well, it is not the first time uh, for her to give a talk on this workshop, and I'm really happy that she continue to be with us. So the floor is yours. Okay, so thank you very much, Elena, for the nice introduction, and uh, thank you once again for inviting me uh, to participate to this very nice conference. I'm really privileged to be here and to be part of this conference. So uh, today I will talk about codes from orbit matrices of Seidel and Laplacian matrices of strongly regular graphs. So uh, I will try to explain you the research uh, that uh, I, was uh, I was doing with my colleagues, uh, Dan Senkovic and Ronan Eager. So uh, while we were doing, they were both also from the, the, my department of mathematics, but now Ronan is in uh, university of, in Dublin University, and Dan is my colleague from department of mathematics. So uh, in this talk, I will uh, try to uh, explain you uh, the research that uh, we were doing and we published in this paper. Uh, and this is actually uh, combining uh, some methods from the graph theory and, uh, uh, um, and applying uh, to the uh, coding theory. So in order to explain you what we have done, I have divided my talk into a few parts. First of all, I will give you some introduction details about this topic. Then uh, I will give you some motivation part, and then I will try to show you what is the method that, uh, that we use to combine uh, these uh, two uh, theories. Okay, so first of all, uh, we will need some basic facts about graphs, uh, especially strongly regular graphs. Uh, so today, strongly regular graphs were uh, seen before, and also you have seen this picture, but uh, I, will, I will again uh, repeat it. So uh, we say that a graph is regular if all the vertices have the same degree. You can see in this picture, this uh, graph is Peterson graph, and it is regular with degree uh, three. Uh, we say that a strongly regular, uh, that a regular graph is a strongly regular of type or with parameters V, K, lambda, uh, mi. And we will denote it by SFG VK lambda mi, um, mu, sorry. If it has uh, V vertices, if it is of the Greek K, if any two adjacent vertices have uh, lambda common vertices, while any two non adjacent vertices have uh, uh, are, are both adjacent to mu common vertices. We can see that very easily in this picture. So, uh, this is a regular graph. As we said, it has 10 vertices. Every two adjacent vertices, you can take any, but for example, these two are adjacent. They have no uh, common adjacent vertices while any two non-adjacent vertices, for example, these two have exactly, in this case, one uh, common vertex. So this is a strongly regular graph with parameters 10, uh, 3, 0, and 1. Um, very known fact, which is uh, very easily to see, is that if you have a strongly regular graph, then the complement of a strongly regular graph will be again a strongly regular graph and we can uh, calculate its parameters. So if the parameters of a strongly regular graphs are VK lambda mu, then uh, the parameters of a complement of its complements are the, uh, this, uh, these ones. Okay, so you can always be sure that when you have a strongly regular, its complement is again strongly regular. Good. So 
uh, to any graph, not just strongly regular, you can associate uh, adjacency uh, matrix, which, which will actually uh, describe you the adjacency between vertices of this graph. So we can uh, denote G to be a graph having the adjacency matrix A, and uh, we will label the rows and columns of this matrix by V1 up to V uh, way, uh, up to the number of the vertices that we have in this graph. Okay, so to this uh, graph, not I'm emphasizing not just to strongly regular, we can uh, associate a few more matrices, not just adjacency matrix. One of these metrics is sidal adjacency matrix. The sidal adjacency matrix of a graph G is the matrix that is defined in with this uh, formula. Actually, it is a matrix that has three entries. It can be zero, minus one, and one. It is zero when we have a position of the same vertex. It will be minus one when two uh, vertices are adjacent, and it will be one if two vertices are not adjacent. Okay, so actually, the side of uh, matrix can be also uh, defined in this uh, way. So if you take all ones matrix, uh, identity matrix, and adjacency matrix of a graph, and if you put this in this formula, you will have the sidal uh, matrix of a graph. Uh, the sidal uh, adjacency matrix is used for uh, switching for sidal, uh, sidal and some other type of switching. And it is very commonly used in algebraic graph theory. In this work, we were using sidal matrix in a way that we try to, uh, to use this matrix in order to obtain uh, codes with nice properties. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the sidal matrix is one uh, type of the matrix that we will uh, use in this work. The other matrices that we will use are Laplacian matrices. Okay, so Laplacian matrices are defined for a simple graph. So let G be a simple graph. So it is a graph without loops, having uh, adjacency matrix A. Okay, so if you take D to be the diagonal matrix with the degrees uh, of this graph on the diagonal, where the ordering is the same as ordering in adjacency matrix. Then if you take, uh, if you extract from the adjacency matrix, you will have the Laplacian matrix of this graph. Uh, usually uh, matrix is displaced and it is called Laplacian or admittance matrix. Okay, so, uh, very similar as uh, Laplacian matrix, it is defined uh, signless Laplacian matrix to be the matrix uh, with uh, absolute L, which is uh, adjacency matrix plus diagonal matrix, which uh, has uh, degrees of this graph on the diagonal. Okay, so these uh, three matrices were uh, base for our research in order to see uh, how they can be uh, used to obtain uh, codes with uh, nice properties. Okay, I will show you what kind of uh, properties they have and how we use them in application. Okay, so I will just quickly go through the uh, main uh, main uh, facts about uh, codes. So code uh, of length n over the uh, alphabet is the subset of uh, q to the n. Elements are called code words. In this work, we are interested in QRE linear codes. So it means that uh, our alphabet will be uh, FQ. And uh, the code um, is, uh, is defined to be an uh, M if it is of, 
of dimension M uh, to be an M-dimensional subspace of the vector space FQ to the N. Okay, so if you take uh, X and Y to be two code words or two elements from FQ to the N, you can define the Hamming distance between these two words, which is the number uh, which is labeled Y D. And it actually says on how many positions these two code words differ. The minimum between all the Hamming distances between every two code words from the code C is defined to be the minimum distance of the code C. So if you have a QRE linear code, which is of length N, dimension K, and distance D, then we will denote it with NKDQ code, and I will call it NKD. Uh, Q code. Um, uh, to any code, you can associate its dual code, which is the orthogonal complement under the standard inner product. So it means that in this uh, dual code lies all the vectors which, uh, 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 which inner product with all the coders from the code C is equal to zero. And we say that the code is self-orthogonal it, it, if it is contained in its dual code and it is self-dual if equality is attained or if it is equal to uh, their dual. Okay, so we will be interested here in self-orthogonal codes. So I will not point out all those codes that are not self-orthogonal because our method works uh, for obtaining self-orthogonal codes. Uh, the self-orthogonal codes are one of the, uh, one, one of the nice family of the codes that you can obtain because of it, its uh, easy, easy way of decoding, of its nice properties and some of the best codes some of the nicest codes that uh, are found are self-orthogonal or even uh, self-dual. Uh, okay, but uh, as I said, uh, we were interested in combining or uh, actually answering on the question how we can use uh, matrices that are associated to strongly regular graphs in order to obtain nice uh, self-orthogonal codes. Uh, what was the motivation for, for our work? So if you uh, go in the literature, you can see that codes that are spanned by adjacency matrices of strongly regular graphs were investigated before. You can find uh, these uh, two very nice papers in which uh, the authors were interested in codes um, that uh, were spanned by adjacency matrices of strongly regular graphs. In 1997, Tonchev in his paper uh, was investigating binary codes that are deriving from Hoffman, Hoffman Singleton and Higman Sims graphs while uh, Hameris, Peters, and uh, uh, Rieke Wurzel in this work in 1999 uh, in, uh, were interested in binary codes of strongly, of some uh, strongly regular graphs. Okay, but they were using just uh, nor normal adjacency matrices of strongly regular graphs. Okay, uh, block designs as incident structures that uh, Dan defined in the talk before me. So block design, just to remind you, is an incident structures uh, with parameters to VK lambda, which says that you have uh, V points, uh, you have the blocks that are all of the same size, if you are speaking about parameter key then key, and have the property that each two points are together in lambda blocks. 
Okay, so incidence matrix is actually a matrix that is uh, speaking about uh, incidence between points and blocks. And incidence matrices of block designs uh, uh, were studied uh, in, a, in a, uh, codes obtained from incidence matrices of block designs, which were studied uh, in many other papers. In, in more papers than strongly than adjacency matrices of strongly regular graphs. And you can find them uh, uh, in, uh, for example, in the book Designs and Their Codes. It is uh, very, very nicely written about codes that are spent by its incidence matrices. Some of the nice results uh, that I'm emphasizing here are those uh, obtained by Boyukliev, uh, Park, uh, Wiene, in which they were interested uh, in uh, uh, two, design, two designs or block designs with these parameters. And uh, codes obtained from these designs and their, uh, and their related uh, Adamar uh, matrices. In this paper, Tonchev studied quantum codes from uh, finite uh, geometry and combinatorial designs. And in this paper, you can also find uh, very nicely described uh, studies uh, uh, about codes spanned by incidence matrices of block designs. Uh, mm, uh, more uh, about uh, combining uh, and obtaining codes from matrices that are related with designs and graphs are those that are related with orbit matrices of designs and graphs. Uh, this research, uh, we can say, actually started with a paper by Harada and Tonchev in which uh, they uh, gave a method for constructing self-orthogonal uh, self codes uh, from uh, orbit matrices of symmetric designs, but with uh, fixed point-free automorphisms. So uh, here they obtained a very nice family of codes from uh, particular uh, designs uh, having fixed point free automorphisms. This uh, research was generalized uh, in these uh, later works in order to um, the authors obtained self orthogonal codes from orbit matrices of two designs with no restrictions on the uh, uh, automorphisms. And moreover, this research was extended for on orbit matrices of strongly regular, strongly regular graphs. And in the last, uh, actually, we generalized this work uh, to obtain self-orthogonal codes from equitable partitions of association schemes. Uh, okay, so the main idea uh, that we are now approaching to, uh, to, to the fact that was uh, crucial for our studies are two papers that I will now mention. In this work, uh, we actually uh, generalized the notion of orbit matrices of uh, incidence uh, matrices on orbit matrices of Adamar matrices. And we saw that this has a very, very nice, these orbit matrices were, have had very nice properties in a way to obtain nice family of, of codes. Um, why one uh, should try to, uh, why did we try to introduce the notion of orbit matrices in this case of Adamar matrices? Uh, because uh, orbit matrices are always defined with respect to some uh, automorphism groups. In this work, we introduce the notion of orbit matrices of Adamar matrices with respect to their permutation automorphism group. And we show that under some conditions, these orbit matrices yield self-orthogonal codes. But moreover, this, uh, this notion of orbit matrices actually gives us a wider range of automorphism groups. And if you have a wider range of groups, then it means that you 
you can have potentially more orbit matrices. So this was the main motivation and the main idea why one uh, could try to introduce the notion of orbit matrices uh, of Adamar matrices, which we know are not uh, zero one uh, matrices. We extended this work, not just to uh, Adamar matrices, but also to uh, Wang, ma Wang matrices. And we, sh we show how one can construct uh, self-orthogonal and Hermitian self-orthogonal codes from orbit matrices uh, of Wang matrices, having the entries in a finite field. Um, in, in this case, the fields of <coughs> two, three, and uh, four. OK. And this uh, actually leads us uh, to the main idea, uh, which was uh, for us, we, uh, let us try to introduce the notion of orbit matrices of certain integer matrices, such as Seidel and Laplacian matrices of strongly regular graphs. And let us try to show that for suitable graph parameters, one can uh, construct codes with nice properties or one can uh, obtain self-orthogonal codes over finite fields. Moreover, we saw that uh, this techniques is working also uh, for obtaining self-orthogonal codes of not just over finite fields, but also over rings of integers. Okay, so what uh, uh, did we need uh, to define and what we need to show uh, before uh, trying to obtain codes? First of all, we needed uh, to see what kind of properties Seidel and Laplacian matrices could have in order to introduce orbit matrices of this type of matrices. So let M be an N times N matrix. A permutation automorphism of the matrix M is a pair of N times N permutation matrices, P and Q, such that uh, this, uh, this expression holds. The set of all such pairs uh, forms the permutation automorphism group, which we will denote with P out of M, and we will call it permutation automorphism group. Uh, it is well known that an automorphism of graph G is a permutation of a vertex set V that preserves the edge a set. And it is well known that an automorphism of out of G induces a permutation automorphism of the adjacency matrix of a graph, and it is of the form PG, PG. So actually, it follows that any automorphism of a strongly regular graph G induces a permutation automorphism of its Seidel, Laplacian, and signless Laplacian matrices. And this was one of the very important facts that we needed in order to go more over or in order to define an orbit matrix of an integer matrix. Okay, so how you can do that? Let G be a permutation automorphism group of an integer matrix M. So you are starting from an integer matrix. So I'm emphasizing here that it does not have to be zero one matrix. It can be an integer matrix. matrix. And let G be a permutation automorphism group that is acting in T orbits on the set of rows and the set of columns of the matrix. We can denote the G orbits on rows and columns of this matrix and let, they be, uh, let it be R1 up to RT and C1 up to CT respectively. And we will put uh, the lengths of this, uh, or we will denote lengths of these orbits uh, on rows by capital omega i, and lengths of the orbits on the columns uh, with uh, omega i. If we could, if we take Mij to be the submatrix of the integer matrix M that is consisting of the rows belonging to the row orbit Ri and the column belonging uh, to column orbit Cj, 
we can denote capital gamma ij and gamma ij to be the sum of some row and some column of this submatrix, respectively. The sums of entries of any two rows or any two columns of this submatrix are equal. So the choice is arbitrary. And in this case, and in this sense, capital gamma ij and gamma ij are well defined. So we can now define that matrices R and C, such that in matrix, uh, matrix uh, is T times T matrix, having the entries capital gamma ij, which are row sums, and C to be uh, T times T matrix having uh, gamma ij for entries, which are column si sums, to be called row orbit matrix and column orbit matrix of the matrix M with respect to the permutation automorphism group G. And this idea of having orbit matrix of an integer matrix with respect to permutation automorphism group we applied now to Seidel and Laplacian matrices. Uh, it is uh, not difficult to show that this lemma holds. So from now on, uh, we will speak about Seidel, Laplacian, and Seidel's Laplacian matrices to be our integer matrices. So let G be a strongly regular graph with parameters V, K, lambda, mu. And uh, we have uh, Seidel Laplacian and Seidel's Laplacian matrices of this graph, respectively. And we can see that square matrices uh, of Seidel Laplacian and Seidel's Laplacian have three different entries depending whether on the position we have the same vertex, whether two vertices are adjacent or whether they are not adjacent. So it is always this case that we have uh, these three uh, entries. So just uh, to, uh, to, to have more concise uh, uh, names, we will hereafter use M to be any of the matrices S, L, or signless Laplacian, which is corresponding to S or G. And I will speak about entries of M square matrix to be, to be alpha, beta, and pi, depending whether uh, we are speaking, whether we are speaking about Seidel, Laplacian, or signless Laplacian matrix, because it is always Mm, depending uh, all on uh, these uh, uh, three positions of the i and j. And uh, uh, matrix M is symmetric, so it means that M square is actually M uh, times M, uh, M times M transpose. Okay, so this, uh, these facts about entries and about properties of having orbit matrix of an integer matrix, in this case, having an orbit matrix of uh, Seidel uh, Laplacian and Seidel's Laplacian matrix, were crucial for us to try to obtain the method that will uh, give, uh, give you conditions how one can use this matrix to obtain uh, self-orthogonal codes. Okay, so in order uh, to see what conditions uh, should be satisfied to obtain self-orthogonal codes, we needed uh, this crucial theorem uh, to hold, which actually uh, gives you uh, the following. If you take G to be a permutation automorphism group of M, I remind you that M is now a Seidel, Laplacian, and Seidel's Laplacian matrix. And if you denote with R1 up to RT and C1 up to CT to be the G orbits on the rows and columns of the matrix M respectively, 
And if you take a capital omega i, omega uh, i, uh, ga capital gamma i j and gamma i j to be defined as uh, I explained above, then you have the, this expression holds. So you have on the, uh, the left on the left side you have the sum of this and of of uh, this statement to be equal to the something that is follows that is so if you take a look at uh, this expression you have that alpha which i remind you is from this statement alpha when you're speaking of outsider is always v minus one if you're speaking about l it's always like this etc it is multiplied with kronecker symbol then you have uh, beta with c which is an uh, which is an element from uh, orbit matrix and this expression uh, multiplied with pi this uh, proving this statement was crucial in order to obtain conditions for uh, having the method of obtaining a self-orthogonal code. So how you can construct it? If you take G to be a permutation automorphism group of uh, Seidel Laplacian or signless Laplacian matrix, which are hidden uh, behind uh, M, which is acting with T orbits, and they are all of the same length, which we can denote by W. And if you take R to be the row orbit matrix of M with respect to G, and if P is a prime dividing alpha, beta, and P, uh, alpha, beta, and uh, pi, where alpha, beta, and pi are defined as a bow, then linear code spent by this orbit matrix will over the final field FQ will give you self-orthogonal code of length T. Excellent. So if you have conditions are, uh, that is arising just from the parameters of strongly regular graph, you can construct self-orthogonal codes. The sketch of the proof, this, uh, as I said, this theorem and um, uh, the whole method uh, lies on the fact that we know what this expression looks like. You have the, all the lengths of the same, uh, uh, all the orbits of the same length, and you know what are the, uh, 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 what uh, are the scalar product of your rows or orbit matrices. And you, if you have that P is a prime that is dividing uh, alpha, beta, and pi, you will obtain self-orthogonal code. Okay, so this is the case when permutation automorphism groups acts with T orbits all of the same length. But this does not have to be the case. You can have, also the case when G is a permutation automorphism group of a side the Laplacian and signless Laplacian matrices. And uh, this permutation automorphism group does not, to, uh, to, does not have to act in the way that it produces uh, orbits of the same length. We can denote by omega J to be the lengths of the G orbits on the columns of M. And uh, let uh, V, uh, W, sorry, W be an element from this uh, length of orbits. And then again, you have a condition uh, which gives you, uh, which, uh, which if it is satisfied, you will obtain self orthogonal code. So if Q is a prime power, where P is a prime dividing alpha, beta, and pi, and if the lengths of the column have the property that P times omega J divides W if omega J is less than W, and if P W divides omega J if W is less than omega J, then the submatrix of orbit matrix, which is corresponding to S row orbits and column orbits of length W, will span a self-orthogonal code of length S over FQ. We used uh, 
permutation automorphism group, uh, we use the orbit matrices of uh, permutation uh, with respect to permutation automorphism group when this group acts in the orbit of the same length, but also when it produced uh, the different uh, lengths of the orbits. The third thing uh, that we also show that can be used is uh, something uh, so, uh, that is, uh, uh, something that we called um, uh, fix uh, fix uh, part of orbit matrix. What is it? Uh, the sub matrix of an orbit matrix that is corresponding to the fixed rows and the fixed columns uh, is called the fixed part of the row uh, matrix R. And uh, uh, usually when you are taking the sub matrix of orbit matrix that is corresponding to the orbits of rows and columns of lengths greater than one is called the non-fixed part. So if you take, uh, so if you take uh, the theorems that I showed you before, it is very easy consequence that says, if you have a permutation automorphism group of uh, matrix M, and if you have corresponding orbit matrix, and if you have omega J to be the length of the G orbits on the columns of this matrix, and if you have that P is a prime that divides omega J, then if you take S rows that are belonging to the fixed part of uh, orbit matrix, then they will spend a self-orthogonal code of length S over the field FQ. So actually we used all, we can say parts of orbit matrices of side Laplacian and sinus Laplacian matrices in order to try to construct codes with uh, nice uh, properties. Okay, so uh, the these methods that I've that I've showed you uh, gives you a method for constructing self-orthogonal codes. Moreover, we were uh, interested in seeing, uh, okay, it is very nice to have a method that will produce yourself orthogonal codes, but uh, we were also uh, very enthusiastic in seeing whether these self orthogonal codes would uh, be uh, more nice that, that they can be as self orthogonal in a way that maybe we can try to construct optimal ones, or uh, if they are not uh, at least near optimal. So uh, when, when I say an optimal linear code, I mean that uh, um, we say that NK linear code is, is said to be an optimal linear NK code if the minimum weight of C achieves the theoretical upper bound, I mean here on singleton bound, on the minimum weight, of NK linear codes. And it will, we will call it near optimal if its minimum distance is at most one less than the largest possible value. And here, when, I, when I'm speaking about optimal and near optimal, I'm referring to the Marcus Grassel's, uh, Grassel uh, table uh, on, the, on this page, and it is called bounds on the minimum distance of linear codes and uh, quantum codes. Okay, so we uh, started to apply uh, the, um, the method uh, to strong to side the Laplacian and sideless Laplacian matrices of strongly regular graphs. And I will now show you uh, what kind of results we obtain. So the method goes in a way that uh, in, uh, we, uh, you have conditions uh, which tells you that take parameters of strongly regular graphs and uh, you can see whether these parameters are suitable for use to obtain self-orthogonal codes. First, in this slide, uh, we were using the whole uh, Seidel matrices to obtain uh, self-orthogonal codes. Uh, it is possible. Why? Because um, a trivial automorphism group uh, is actually producing you orbit matrix, which is equal to the matrix uh, as it is. 
So you can span a code with the whole sidal uh, matrix. In this case, also with the whole Laplacian and soundless Laplacian matrix, because these matrices are actually orbit matrices with respect to trivial automorphism uh, loops. So we've taken in this uh, in this uh, table uh, Peterson graph, um, all uh, uh, graphs uh, with parameters 26, 10, 3, 4. It is known that there are 10 non-isomorphic and uh, all four non-isomorphic strongly regular graphs with these parameters. Their parameters are suitable for obtaining self-orthogonal codes. And in this table, you can see what uh, we obtained. Um, so you can see the parameters of the codes, uh, the parameters of the duals, and the sizes of the full automorphism uh, groups. Those having the star are uh, optimal and near optimal. And in this case, we obtained uh, optimal and uh, some near uh, optimal self-orthogonal uh, uh, self-orthogonal uh, self OK, so uh, moreover, we uh, went uh, on some other uh, strongly regular graphs. And here uh, we obtained uh, codes, self-orthogonal codes from orbit matrices of sidal matrix of strongly regular graph with these parameters. We've taken a strongly regular graph with these parameters on which the finite simple group U34 acts transitively. Uh, you will see in these examples, I will always emphasize um, uh, it's eight extransitively because I uh, want to show you which kind of strongly regular graph we've taken. Um, and uh, these strongly regular graphs that uh, we were uh, working with have the big, huge full automorphism groups. They are nice. They were nice for us because we were searching for those with uh, big automorphism groups because then you have uh, more potentially automorphisms, automorphism groups from which you can uh, construct uh, orbit matrices. It means more potentially uh, nice self uh, orthogonal self orthogonal codes, and in these tables you can see uh, um, uh, with respect to what uh, to which uh, subgroup of the full automorphism group we constructed orbit matrices, the codes that we obtained, and the sizes of the full automorphism group. So this is from sidal matrices. And uh, this is uh, also, uh, these are also codes obtained from uh, orbit matrices of sidal matrices. Here we've taken the uh, rank three graph with, with these uh, parameters on which uh, orthogonal group acts transitively. Uh, it has a huge uh, automorphism group and you can see that uh, some of the codes that uh, we obtain um, here are uh, ternary codes that uh, were satisfying the conditions, and some of them have uh, huge automorphism groups. Even more, you will see even, even bigger automorphism groups. OK, here it was uh, Laplacian matrices that we've taken into consideration, and in this case, um, the, the strongly regular graph uh, with parameters 1, 6, 5, 36 did not satisfy condition for obtaining self-orthogonal codes for Laplacian matrices, but its complement did. Since this is also strongly regular graph, we could take an, into consideration the complement. And here are uh, the codes that we, that we obtain. You can see how big automorphism groups uh, of the codes are. Uh, this is also from uh, Laplace matrices, uh, but it is strongly regular graph uh, on which Yanko, on 280 vertices, on which Yanko group J2 acts uh, transitively. And here, for the first time, we obtain uh, that uh, conditions are satisfied all for, also for obtaining binary uh, self-orthogonal codes. Some of them are optimal, and some of them are uh, near, uh, near optimal. 
these results are obtained from, from signless Laplacian matrices. And here is very nice to show you how big automorphism groups of these codes are. Uh, as uh, Dan said in his uh, talk, if you remember, codes having the huge automorphism groups are suitable for more application, for example, for permutation decoding. And uh, we saw that in our cases, the codes that are arising from this type of matrices actually have big automorphism groups. So potentially in the future, they could be, uh, they could be good uh, base for uh, permutation decoding. Okay, so what can be done more? With this method, if you take a little look on this expression, you, you can see that actually you can rewrite this expression and you can obtain um, a similar expression, but with different uh, factors, because you have alpha here, you, can, you have alpha minus pi. What does it mean? It means actually that you little bit change your divisibility property, you will actually obtain, um, ob you, you, you could actually obtain self-orthogonal codes from strongly regular graphs that are not uh, satisfying conditions given before. So you have even wider range of possibilities of using strongly uh, regular graphs. And we've, uh, we have uh, done that. It is not difficult to show that also for these divisibility properties, you can apply uh, the, same, um, the same result, uh, the same uh, expression that we need uh, for obtaining a self-orthogonal codes. Uh, okay, uh, this, uh, this different condition we applied on uh, two very nice uh, graphs, strongly regular graphs. One of them is higman sims graph. It is unique graph with parameters 122.06 on which the higman uh, sims group acts. And the another graph is Mc, uh, McLaughlin graph, which is unique graph with these parameters on which McLaughlin uh, group uh, acts. And uh, the codes here are uh, the codes, self-orthogonal codes uh, that we constructed. And the conditions that are satisfied for higman sims graph uh, are satisfying for Seidel matrix and for a McLaughlin graph, um, Laplacian matrices uh, are those that could be used for obtaining. In the case of Hig uh, also for Higman Sims graph and McLaughlin graph, we have that um, uh, uh, code, self orthogonal codes that could be constructed are those over uh, F5. Um, mm, Okay, so uh, what I told you uh, in the beginning, uh, actually we saw that our uh, method is working uh, uh, not just uh, over finite fields, but also um, over, uh, over finite rings. Uh, so linear codes over finite rings are defined similarly as linear codes over finite fields, uh, but here, uh, uh, codes are modules, uh, but here um, instead of vector spaces, we have uh, modules. And the most famous codes over rings are codes over Z4, which is the ring of integer modulo, uh, modulo 4. Uh, this is uh, something that I will just show you uh, quickly because I don't have time now. But uh, Z4 code is uh, of length n is a Z4 submodule of Z4 to the n. And for Z4 codes, um, there are three ways that are defined, Hemming weight, Lee weight, and Euclidean weight, which are uh, differently uh, defined. And actually they are depending on the number of the uh, components of code word. Uh, which are equal to one, two, or uh, three. 
for Z4 code, uh, they are uh, actually um, uh, the researchers that, uh, that are working in this field are interested either in type 2 Z4 code or type 1. Uh, so dual Z4 code, which has the property that all Euclidean weights are divisible by eight is called type two. And if it is not type two, it is called type uh, one. And uh, type two Z4 code of length N, it is known that it exists if and only if N is congruent in zero modulo four. Mm, the minimum uh, Euclidean weight of this type of code is bounded. And if with, uh, with this expression, and if you um, uh, have a type 2 Z4 code that is meeting this bound, it is called extrema. And what we were able to see, we were able to see that our method uh, for obtaining self orthogonal, orthogonal linear codes from Seidel and Laplacian matrices H of strongly regular graphs actually works also for obtaining self-orthogonal Z4 codes from orbit matrices of this type of matrices. So we, we proved the, 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 the analogs theorem as I told you before, but uh, in the rings of integers modulo. Uh, modulo. Uh, uh, it, it stays now to try to find uh, to try to find nice examples and try to go deeper in this way of uh, research. So I hope uh, I, uh, I uh, what was what was the idea is to show you how uh, one can use matrices that are related to graphs in order uh, to uh, obtain nice results also in the coding theory. And with this, I would like to stop my talk and uh, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful talk. Are there any questions to Andrea? If I may. Yeah, sure, please. Yeah. So, so this is a list of uh, successful ex experiments in a way, right? Yes, yes, yes. Because, um, for example, for each uh, graph that we've taken into consideration, we also obtain some trivial. So we didn't put them into account. And also uh, for some groups, uh, orbit matrices were too big. So we couldn't um, get the whole information about the code. The minimum distance for, was uh, missing. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I'm, I'm hoping there will be some theorems that will predict the outcome, you know, in a way where you say, if this is true yeah. for the stronger regular graph, this will be true for the codes or something. Yeah. The other thing that kept coming to my mind are the LDPC codes. Uh, uh, you are aware of those, right? Yeah, yeah is, yes. Yeah. Is there a connection or? As far as I know, uh, no, but this is definitely interesting thing to try to see because um, maybe there is some connection of using properties of strongly regular graphs. These uh, matrices are uh, huge. And as far as I know, for LDPC codes, you have to have sparse matrices. Yes, that is correct. So maybe they, they are potentially good to try, but we didn't. We didn't. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for a nice talk. Thank you. Any further questions to Andrea? Well, if not, then uh, let us send Andrea again for this very interesting talk containing a lot of new information and new approaches. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Yeah.